The current us is the product of millions of years of evolution, and the trillions of cells making up our muscles, organs, and the rest of our bodies are cogs in this machine, performing specific and important functions that, if they stop working, will mean certain peril for us, right? Well, no, actually. There are actually parts of our body that are completely useless. So, from teeth that'll force you to go to the dentist, even if you don't want to, to one surprising body part that our descendants might not have the opportunity to enjoy, here are 10 body parts that you have but are completely useless. Number 10. Wisdom Teeth. Let's start off this video with something that's obviously useless but's caused millions of people worldwide the utmost grief. Everybody has wisdom teeth, but honestly, we don't really notice them that often. The problem lies within when they do want to make themselves noticed, which usually involves mind-numbing pain that would render a person useless. Now, while they are deemed a major hassle for us, wisdom teeth were extremely useful to our ancestors. Human eating habits, much like us humans, have evolved over millennia. Our ancestors needed extra teeth to grind up plant material. In fact, some studies claim that the skulls of our ancestors had larger jaws and more teeth. As human eating habits changed, our jaws evolved to become smaller. But it seems that the third molars weren't informed there was no room for them in our mouths anymore. So they just kind of sit there, growing and taking much needed real estate, even though they have no function. And actually, they're more harmful than anything else, so dentists choose to remove them, at a very high price, of course. Number 9. The Appendix. Oh boy, I got this removed when I was young, so I hate this. Most of you wouldn't even realize you got an appendix, especially those of us who have slept through biology class. Though you can get appendicitis and you're suddenly reminded that it's there, having no purpose at all except for getting inflamed, possibly bursting and poisoning your blood and killing you. Also just generally being a very big nuisance. But it hasn't always been a useless organ that it is now. However, in order to understand that, we gotta understand our own body a bit more. Studies have actually shown that the appendix protects your immune system by hosting healthy bacteria that regulate your intestinal flora. This good bacteria is actually the equilibrium inside of our bodies. But when we get sick, our bodies go into cleanup mode and tries to get rid of all the bad bacteria that it can. Unfortunately, our bodies can't really distinguish the good from the bad and expel both with equal prejudice. To escape said purge, the good bacteria takes refuge in the appendix. That all may sound very useful, but in reality, today we use our appendix far less than our ancestors did when their diet was rougher and had to perform different digestive functions. Rather than eating raw meat, we're eating hopefully cooked meat. Number 8. The Plica Semilinaris. Oh, I'm pretty sure I mispronounced that. Ever wish you had self-cleaning eyes? Well, unfortunately for us, we've evolved beyond possession of a nictating membrane, or a third eyelid. This serves to clear away debris and moisten the eyes of most reptiles, amphibians, and birds. This is a super small fold of tissue that is found in the inner corner of the eye. People tend to confuse it with the lacrimal gland, the part of the eye that creates tears, but you actually couldn't be more wrong. All that remains of this feature in humans is the small fold of tissue in the innermost corner of the eyes, called the plica semilinaris, which doesn't seem to have any useful purpose to speak of. Number 7. Tonsils. Tonsils are considered to be the body's front line of protection against ingested or inhaled pathogens. However, much like the appendix, they have the tendency of being more of a bother than actually being helpful. Because of their primary job, tonsils are prone to infections and even cause more severe health problems if left untreated. That's the reason why doctors always prefer removing them if they get infected, rather than let it do its job and fight off the infection itself. This has also given rise to the thought that maybe immune response isn't the primary function at all, as in fact, it's quite useless. Number 6. The Mystery Tendon Commonly known as Darwin's turbicle, the mystery tendon is a vestigial feature that almost everyone possesses. Like I mentioned, almost everyone has this and you can check whether you have one right now. Simply make a fist and tighten it up and observe the raised tendon running in the middle of your wrist. Around 85 to 90 percent of people have this. It basically connects the palmaris long muscle, a muscle that serves no purpose whatsoever. In fact, 11 percent of people don't have this muscle, but those who do don't necessarily possess better strength or grip. In fact, it looks kind of uncomfortable, actually. The palmaris long muscle is far more useful in other mammals, specifically those that rely more on their arms for movement, such as monkeys and lemurs. Though, if you are into rock climbing and martial arts, perhaps, or especially MMA, you'd appreciate this muscle. That said, the muscle is considered so excessive that many surgeons remove it entirely and use to repair muscle damage on different parts of the body. 
Number 5. The Ear. Okay, yeah, stop your typing in anger. No, it's actually not the entire ear, but rather just the ear's auricurial muscles. And yes, I know I mispronounced that. I do it on purpose. With all that being said, though, the human ear is made of entire groups of muscles that are similar to the monkeys. The only difference is that monkeys can move these muscles and we can't, for the most part. Monkeys move their ears to stay vigilant and pick up danger or search for their prey. But for us, our ears stay still, which means that these muscles have lost their primary function in the case of humans. Ancient primates used to use these muscles as they were not able to move their heads horizontally. Since we can effectively and quickly move our head to hear and capture any sound, these muscles basically became useless for us. Number 4. Male Nipples I have always said this, and I am right. Think about it, have you ever found a use for your man nipples? Of course not. The male nipples don't have any definite function other than decoration, and pain for some of us. And also a place to hang other decorations as well, if you catch my drift. However, unlike other so-called vestigial organs, man nipples aren't some leftovers of our so-called ancestors. Instead, they're remnants of embryonic development. To understand more about this, you'll have to understand how male babies develop. Contrary to what you may believe, you are not a man from conception. Every fetus in the womb starts life as females. When the XY chromosome is present, the fetus will then produce testosterone and transform into a male. Unfortunately though, nipples have already developed by this time, leaving us men with a useless reminder of a time in all our lives when we were baby girls. Man nipples cannot produce lactate and to make matters worse are prone to breast cancer. The good news is that the size of the male nipple has been shrinking and many biologists think that they would eventually vanish in the future. So look forward to a future full of Ken dolls, from the waist up at least. Number 3. The Fabella If you haven't heard of the vestigial feature known as the Fabella, well, you're not alone. Scientists have long thought that this teeny tiny bone that sits beside the tendon behind the knee was lost to evolution until it made a surprising comeback. It was found to be present in a mere 11.2% of people in 1918. In a recent study, though, it was discovered that those numbers have more than tripled in the last century, with up to 39% of the population now in possession of the bone. It's believed that the modern human diet has made us taller and heavier than our ancestors, considering, well, look at all them cheeseburgers. This results in additional strain on our knees, and the appearance of the fabella was evolution's response to the additional stress. The bone provides a smooth surface for the tendon in the back of our knee to slide on, reducing the amount of friction and stress our larger calf muscles and longer shin bones put on our knees. Unfortunately, though, experts also believe the existence of the fabella contributes to uneven force on the knee, leading to cartilage damage that may result in osteoarthritis. Either way, it remains up for debate if the bone presence is truly necessary. Now it's time for the day's best pick. Please, please, kitties, hold your oohs and your ahs for our next vestigial feature of our body that harkens back to our primate ancestors. All of us are conceived with this, but it disappears as we get ready to grow up. But quite shockingly, some are longer than others. Find out what I'm talking about next with number two. The coccyx. It's a funny word. Another lingering hint at our evolutionary past, the coccyx, or the tailbone, is all that remains of our ancestral tails. In many creatures, tails can serve many beneficial functions such as balance, communication, and in the case of some primates, even prehensile. As humans gradually evolved to walk upright, our tails became unnecessary for our balance and began to disappear altogether. Leaving our tailbone is the only evidence that it was there in the first place. If you've ever taken an unlucky spill and landed on your tailbone like me, you probably found yourself in extraordinary pain while wondering why you have the dang thing if its only purpose is to cause you a great deal of pain, while muttering quite a few choice words. That, actually, is a very good question, so let's go over it. It has been argued that the fused vertebrae that comprise the coccyx serves to help anchor some minor muscles and possibly aid in the support of the pelvic organs. However, there are many well-documented cases involving the surgical removal of the tailbone, which all resulted in little to no side effects for the person, except for a big hospital bill, which suggests this evolutionary leftover may be totally unnecessary. Before we move on, do me a favor. My analytics show that only about 15% of you watching are actually subscribed. Come on guys, what's up with that? Can you guys please hit the subscribe button? You guys watch my videos every day anyway, so you might as well subscribe and keep up to date with every video we put out. Number 1. Toes. Heads and shoulders and toes are not needed. Okay, yeah, I know what you're thinking. If you would just stop giving me that unbelieving look and also stop typing for a minute, let me explain. 
Apart from getting stubbed on a fairly regular basis, toes actually do have an important use. Our balance would be completely off if we lose them. At least, for now. These still pretty useful digits aren't really as useful as fingers, and as evolution has proven time and time again, useless body parts have gotta go. Or they just kinda stay there and be useless. Studies have shown that human balance has been slowly shifting towards the inner feet away from the toes, and when this happens, our toes will simply be fused together. I find that mental picture quite disturbing, especially when I picture that single huge toenail. Blah. Which part of your body is completely useless? Let us know down below in the comments! Also, make sure to check out the channel's other amazing videos. As always, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Later, everybody!